How much would it cost for every state to go 100% electric? What sorts of policies are drivers already paying for? And are there any new laws that could cost you money? We are already paying for these policies, and even if your state hasn't decided to ban gasoline and diesel vehicles, this isn't just the California problem. I'll explain. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we give you more than car reviews and first looks of new vehicles. We give you car smarts because knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. Today, we are lucky enough to have a conversation with Rob Underwood. He's president of the Energy Marketers of America to answer these questions about electric vehicles because we've had a lot of conversation on our site and I wanna make sure you get the correct answers with documentation because everybody seems to have an opinion so Rob, thank you for joining us today. I, I wanna to talk about what sorts of policies that drivers, consumers are already dealing with and what, what's going on with EVs and the government because at Energy Marketers of America, you work with literally all the different stations out there and the different renewables. And I wanna hear what's going on so that our viewers can actually learn something. Oh, absolutely, thank you for having me, Lauren. There's a ton of policies though that consumers are paying right now. Uh, from uh, uh, penalties for using gas in a diesel fuel, low carbon, uh, 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 low carbon uh, or national national fuel economy standards, uh, as you can say, a ban on the internal combustion engine by 2035 in the state of California, which several other states follow California's lead. Uh, that's going to impact consumer choice. Uh, and then, of course, I think the biggest thing, though, that consumers need to realize um, is that you know we're all utility ratepayers. So there's a concern though that public utility commissions are gonna go out and try to expand EV infrastructure by using ratepayers, meaning that I'm a ratepayer, you're a ratepayer, everybody gets a utility bill each month, and those fees will likely go up in order to expand EV infrastructure. This is gonna come with a cost though. We actually commissioned a study last year that right now we're at 2% of electric vehicles currently on the road. To get to 10% of EV penetration, it's gonna cost around $150 billion. $150 billion with a B, folks. It's a lot of money there. And this is just talking about upgrading electric, uh, electrical conduit, circuit breaker, the EV charger itself. It's, this study does not even touch on how we can actually get the power generation to power these EVs. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll you know, need to do another study, but those, that 150 billion is just the, the immediate cost there uh, just to get to 10% of electric vehicles on the road. So just something to keep in mind. So, Rob, you know, we're already paying for some of this in our policies, you know, the cost of electric cars and ZEV credits, increased gasoline prices, and, and all these additional highway maintenance fees, by the mile taxes in some states. So if, if, if California gets what they want and the rest of the states that follow, how much is it going to cost for the whole state to be 100% electric? Let's look at some real numbers. It's really, really hard to say. I mean, I don't think the states have done their own their own homework, though. So uh, it could really, really range. And I just mentioned my study again: 150 billion dollars to get to 10 percent of a uh, of uh, wow. for EV penetration. That's a big, big, big deal there. And that is, again is just for the home itself for the charger. It's not all. It's not talking about the electric generation that we're going to need. And we're already having a hard time keeping the lights on in certain states. That's a major concern. There's also a push towards uh, all electric heat pumps across the country. I mean, I represent heating fuel dealers in the Northeast, though. And, you know, I guess there's a war on liquid fuels up there as well. And they're all going to push towards electric, electric heat pumps on top of EVs. How will the power grid uh, handle that? Think about it, if a Category 5 hurricane is coming toward the Florida coastline. Everyone has to charge up their car all at once in order to get out of harm's way. That is a big, big concern there. So there's already a liquid fuels infrastructure in place. And we're already getting cleaner and greener liquid fuels through renewable diesel fuel, Renewable gasoline has a big potential, biobutanol. There's cleaner options out there with cleaner internal combustion engines. So we're all, you know, for look, you know, looking forward to working with the Biden administration to have cleaner, greener liquid fuels to immediately lower our carbon footprint now. We've talked about this before on the channel. We've talked about hydrogen. We've talked about CNG, compressed natural gas. And then of course there's e-gas, which is really cool because it's all synthetic. And that means out the tailpipe is zero emissions. So if we're lowering emissions and these percentages and people are thinking about electric vehicles, I don't think they realize the double the insurance costs, the higher maintenance for brakes and for tires and the cost of installing that lovely charger in your home, mm -hmm. if that's what you could do between 500 and $2,000 plus one to $3,000 for an electrician to install it. I mean, you start adding all that up and you start thinking, wow, I, I'm gonna be paying a lot more. So the government also has um, accounted for this, hasn't really accounted for this impact, have they, for consumers? And, and how are we gonna 
control it so that consumers aren't being hurt so badly in order to put this infrastructure in place because that's not what they did when it came to gas stations. Right. I mean, my members, they, and they had to get, get a loan from the bank, though, in order to you know, build that gas station. So, and again, utilities are, you know, they basically have a guaranteed rate of return. They have everybody's a rate payer. I mean, everybody. The President of the United States is a rate payer. I'm a rate payer. I mean, everybody's a rate payer. So, again, those fees will likely go up in order to expand EV infrastructure. And this from the, from the motor fuel side of things, though, it's like, look, I mean, our, my members who are gas station owners, own they're basically wholesale distributors, so the tanker trucks that you see on interstate highways who are delivering fuel, and of course they own gas stations as well. So they maybe you know having the maybe selling the Shell or Chevron or BP brand, but those gas stations are independently owned and operated. And some of those folks will be getting the EV charging, but to go 100% all in for electrification, we believe is short-sighted because our industry already has other solutions in place to immediately lower our carbon footprint now through cleaner, greener liquid fuels, as you just mentioned. Do we have a clear idea of how much electricity it will take to power every car on the road? We really don't know. Uh, but I can tell you this, there's a study by the National Renewable Energy Lab that says that uh, in order to get to 66% of electric vehicles on the road by 2050, we're gonna have to double our electricity capacity. Again, double it. <laughs> we're already having a hard time keeping the lights on now. So this whole idea that we're gonna you know, get to 66% of electric vehicles on the road by 2050. Um, you know, there's going to be there's going to need uh, uh, more power generation. And keep in mind too, though, these EVs are known as zero emission vehicles. They're not technically really a zero emission vehicle uh, because the batteries itself they require lithium, cobalt, some of these other minerals that go into the battery that actually make the battery. They come with a carbon footprint, which means you have to dig up the ground in order to get these minerals. So that emits carbon into the air. So these cars are not essential, they're not zero emission vehicles. Uh, so just keep that in mind the next time, you, if you're thinking about buying an EV, you do actually have a carbon impact. So just something there that, that consumers may not know. Right, and those batteries are not recyclable on these electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I think we've discussed this on the channel before, and I've had a lot of people comment down, you know, on the comments down below. So put your comments, I'm sure you've got them, and I'll make sure to get Rob any questions you might have. But, you know, what can state and federal officials do to protect the lower income workers? I think this is a big factor. They're pushing so hard and, and they're so aggressive to make this happen. You know, what's the impact and, and what can government do? Well, I think that public utility commission shouldn't allow utilities to go out and expand uh, uh, fees on ratepayers. I, I think if uh, the pri there's always so much money being invested in from the private sector, let the, let the, the free market work. And, and it's already sort of pushing EVs. But again, it's going to take time. But the government should not be in, uh, involved in raising or allowing uh, public utility commissions to, uh, to, to raise rates on, on utility ratepayers, but as well as, you know, offering so many incentives though for electric vehicles. There's a ton of them out there. And it's costing taxpayers a lot of money though, whether they, you know, of course, if you don't own a, an EV, you're definitely getting a short end of the stick though. But right. again, it, it, the, these cleaner, greener internal combustion engines with, the, with of course the cleaner, greener renewable diesel fuel, renewable gasoline, biobutanol, so many of these cleaner options here. We're already, we, we already have the infrastructure, the liquid, uh, liquid infrastructure in place to reduce our carbon emissions now. We're all for it. We're ready to work with the Biden administration on it. We all could be team players here, and, and as well as EV charging. But again, this is not the, the solution. You know, 100% electrification is not the solution to lower America's carbon footprint. Certainly. And, and I, I understand that we're all trying to be more environmentally friendly as well. So is there a chance that this could backslide? I mean, as they push so hard, there's no off ramp, it seems from the government. They just wanna keep pushing this agenda and, and it's costing everybody money as we both agree. Uh, and I know I've had a lot of people say, well, it's not costing me much. Well, nothing in life is free. So what, you know, what can we do to sort of protect this besides the renewable energies? Is there anything else that the energy marketers of America are doing and, and other impacts that people should know about? Well, I, I mentioned earlier, just work with this current administration to more research and development and cleaner, li greener liquid fuels. Again, because we already have the infrastructure in place, it will be less cost costly for uh, for uh, for consumers. But uh, yeah, public utility commissions, they, it's a concern. They, they shouldn't be in the business of, of raising rates to go out and expand EV infrastructure. They should, already, they should be more worried about updating our current infrastructure now so that we can keep the lights on now let alone you know, wait for a bunch of these electric vehicles to, to hit the marketplace on top of that. That's gonna put more strain on consumers, more strain on the economy. And quite honestly, it may not be that great for the environment in, at the end of the day, because again, these zero emission vehicles, as they call them, right? They're not really <laughs> zero emission vehicles because you're getting, you, you know, you're having to get the minerals there. You're having to dig up the ground. 
that actually comes with a carbon footprint and also the recycling issues that come with it. So just keep that in mind the next time you're looking at maybe possibly buying an electric, electric vehicle. Uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, the, the summary of where uh, the energy markers of America is coming from. I know you wanted, to, we had discussed off air, but you wanted to put something in about credit card companies because I think this is interesting and consumers are not aware of that. Look, when you pull up to the pump, uh, you know, every time you swipe your card, two to three percent of that uh, transaction goes to the credit card companies and the card issue and banks. So they're pretty much the five largest banks. Uh, it's a big deal. Sometimes in the case of rising gas prices, so the credit card companies make more off selling gas than the gas station owner. I mean, credit card interchange fees, credit card fees, basically, it's white fees, as we call them. They're the second largest expense outside of labor costs for a convenience store owner. That's a big, big deal. And it's not just convenience store owners. Every small business owner out there pays interchange actually everybody pays interchange technically uh, so every every time you swipe your card again think about that when you're seeing rising gas prices credit card companies could be making more off selling gas than the actual gas station owner very interesting see i don't think people think about that they don't realize that these are franchises these people invest their lives into it it's their small business and the impact is quite dramatic if we were to go all electric you'd be a lot of people a lot of jobs and we're seeing that not just it, what's going to happen here in the U.S., but we're already seeing France and Germany pushing back on, you know, this 2035 number is might just be a little bit too aggressive. So we're hoping that, you know, with Energy Marketers America, that you're, you're working with the Biden administration that you said you are. And let's hope they're listening to you because the true cost to the consumers, to the voter uh, is quite dramatic. And if people have questions, they can go to your website. There's more information on the study. You got it, energymarketersofamerica.org. Uh, we have our study up there and uh, definitely take a look at the website. And uh, we're very proud of our name. Remember, we were formerly known as the Petroleum Marketers Association of America. We changed our name for a reason. We do believe in uh, lower carbon liquid fuels and we, we have some solutions here. Uh, uh, so looking forward to it and looking forward to working with the Biden administration. And you can put your comments down below and I'll make sure to get a hold of Rob and stay for the bottom line. So what is the impact to you and your wallet? Here's the bottom line. What policies should you keep an eye out for in your state that will increase your taxes and expenses? ZEV electric car mandates, banning of cars and trucks powered by gasoline and diesel, PUC rate-based increases, which means electric costs are going to go up, massive infrastructure build-out is going to be expedited, and EV transition, and you're going to pay for that. And the reason why we care about how you're spending your money on charging is simply because taxpayers are on the hook. Taxpayers didn't pay to build out gasoline stations or cell phone towers. And why does it make sense here? When private companies are going to end up making money off of you building the infrastructure and you foot the bill. If you got value from this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And if you have additional questions, especially for myself or Rob, put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to get you an answer. You can follow me on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix to stay on top of best prices and more auto information. And there's a lot more on my website, Car Coach Reports. It's in English and in Spanish. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to our podcast, it's Total Car Score on all platforms. We're having a great time. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.